What do you know about portable power stations and how they work? Well, today, Jonathan's gonna explain it all in ways that I can understand. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. And Jonathan might be an expert on po um, portable power banks or solar generators or whatever you want to call them, but I'm not. What I'm interested in is how I use it and making sure that it works. And so I know that a lot of my other viewers, you guys feel the same way. I know there's experts out there like Johnny, and then there's People like me who just want to use it but don't really understand all the details. So in this video, what the purpose is is to bring it down to a level that I can understand it so that maybe some of our viewers can understand it a little bit better too. Okay, that sounds like a great plan. So first of all, what is a portable power bank? Or what are, what are all the things we call them? A solar generator? Solar generator, portable power station, power bank. There's a variety of terms out there, but they're basically talking about the same thing. Um, and that is these devices, which essentially are a big battery um, with the equipment inside so that it will turn it into um, normal standard household power so that you can run appliances. You can also charge phones um, and charge other DC kinds of things. But this is a big, big battery bank with an inverter, which is the device that converts the energy back to household use, um, a charge controller to keep it from overcharging the batteries. And then of course we have the solar panels that are a separate part of that. Okay, so what I'm most concerned about is whether or not when the power goes out, this will take care of whatever I need, right? So how do I know which one of these is gonna take care of what I need? Okay, that's one of the biggest questions out there is there's just not a clear understanding of how to figure that out. So first thing you need to do is decide what are your critical loads? What is it that is most important? Um, and again, you're probably not, unless you're independently wealthy, you're not gonna have a system big enough to run everything that you want to run. So what is it that's most important? My freezer. Okay. My washing machine. Okay. My bread maker. Okay. And actually like the nebulizer. Right. It's a, it's a breathing treatment, right? Um, we do all of our lights off of solar lights that are separate from this. So I wouldn't think that, oh, if it's summertime, a fan. Right. But I know that you already told me I can't have a heater off this. Um, that's not the best way to use the energy. <laughs> you could use a heater on most of these, but is that really the way you want to use that energy? Because once that energy is gone, then you've got to get it back somehow, either through, um, cause we're talking a crisis situation. You're either going to have to plug it into solar and it's going to take a while to charge. It's going to take a lot longer to charge than it is for that heater to going to chew up all that power. So, um, yeah, there's things that you can run. There's things that you should run. Uh, there's things you shouldn't run. Heating, cooking, and air conditioning are typically things that you probably don't want to run with this. It's not that you can't, but you're probably going to want that energy for things like you mentioned, medical devices, um, your washing machine, your freezer, uh, your fridge, things like that. You're going to want to save that energy to run those. Um, does that kind of answer that question? Okay. Yeah, so visually now. So would any of these be able to run my freezer? And how big is my freezer? Yeah, okay. We have about a 15 cubic foot freezer and it, when it's running, it uses about 90 watts of energy. So um, any one of these can run that. It's just a matter of how long it could run it. So in an emergency situation, any one of these could take care of my freezer. It just depends on how long. Right. Okay. Yes. So theoretically, if I, if it was sunny, could I recharge the battery using solar and just keep my freezer going for a long period of time. Yes, and that's that's what we're looking at doing in a crisis situation. When you can't just plug this thing into the wall, you're gonna wanna be harvesting solar. And of course that depends on the day and the season, whether you're gonna be able to put enough energy back in to account for the energy that you've, that you've used. You can see these solar panels here, they're all in different sizes, in different configurations, styles. 
but yes, you can plug those solar panels into these and be charging, and, and you do need to be a little bit careful because some stations will not allow you to do that. Some stations won't allow you to be putting energy in and using energy at the same time but most of them will, especially the larger ones. So if I were an elderly woman uh -huh. and I was on oxygen, and so I needed that when I sleep, or let's say a CPAP when I sleep, and um, but that was the majority of what my need might be, what would you recommend? How do I figure out which one of these would work? Again, it's gonna go back to understanding how much energy that device takes. Now there is a label on them usually, Sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not terribly accurate. But again, if you have one of those little energy consumption meters, you can figure that out really closely. And then knowing what you need to run, um, you can pick the right station to allow you to run that through the night. And you know, CPAP machines are typically around 50 watts of energy that they need, depending on the features, some a little less, some a little more. Um, Oxygen concentrators are typically bigger users of energy, so you really need to understand your load, and then you can decide, will this do it? Now, those are kind of unique devices if you're just using those at night, because then you can just plug it in during the day, use it at night. Um, plug it into a solar panel? Yes. Okay. You could have the solar, um, and again, you, you just need to recognize that some days you're not going to get a lot of solar. Cloudy days, stormy days, those kinds of things. You're not going to get a lot of solar, but you know, anything's better than nothing. Okay. So which one of these would work for that? If I had both a CPAP and an oxygen concentrator that I was going to use at night? We'd be probably talking about 400 watts of output. Okay. Um, for eight so, hours. Yeah. So okay. none of these are really going to be able to do that. Okay. None of these, this one is 1500 watt hours. Um, so that means if we're running 400 watts, we can only run for about three hours, three hours and a little bit. And the other thing to understand is, um, even though this is rated for um, 1500 watt hours, only about maybe 1300 of that, 12 or 1300 of that is usable. You don't want to draw them all the way to zero. Um, so you only have a usable amount of about 80% of the total watt hour capacity. Okay, so let's ask this question a little bit differently. If I just had a CPAP and then I used another one for the oxygen concentrator, is that possible? Would it get me through the night? This one still won't. So then like this energy one has a bunch, like this is the main unit, right? Right. But then it has a bunch of batteries that you could stack Correct. right under it. And, yes. And you can expand the system. So this system would expand to accommodate that. Correct? Yes, yes. This one and, and some of the other systems out there, they will actually expand to whatever you think you need. So you would stack additional batteries on the bottom here so that uh, each one of these batteries, for example, is a thousand watt hours. So you could do a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, um, whatever you think you need. If that was the right system for you, you could, you could expand this. Still keeping the same head unit, so this this would stay the same, but the battery stack underneath could um, be added to. Okay, well, my next question, um, and this comes directly from the viewers, how does it work? Like, so show me, how does it plug in? How am I gonna charge this? You say household power, but what is household power? Okay, so just like whatever you would plug into the wall. For example, this one goes on this EcoFlow unit. So turn that around. Wait, turn it, yeah, so they can see it. So, and then this is just gonna plug in here and then into the wall or into the outlet right over there. Right over here. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so now it's charging. Do I have to push any buttons or anything for it to charge? Uh, no, in this case, it's just gonna start charging. You heard it beep. It's gonna start charging. So. so with this one, I can do it like this, right? But I can also charge it with the car. Teach me that. Yeah, yeah. So, and most of these come with this little charging cord that you can use right in your cigarette lighter um, receptacle in your car. Okay, but I would only want to do that if the car is running. So if I, if it, the power was out and I'm taking a trip somewhere to go get something, 
that's the good time that's when I could time take to, advantage yeah. of that, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, now tell me about a generator. How do I charge it with a generator? Oh, uh, just the same way because this cord, if you're using a fuel-based generator, you're just going to plug this into your generator and it will charge this up just the same way. So and with the generator, I could be running several different things at the same time, right, while yeah. charging this. And then when I'm not using that generator, I still have power in this. Yes. And kind of my ideal system is to have um, one of these power stations and then a good inverter generator. Um, and you would only use that generator when you had to, to, to charge this back up. And again, like you mentioned, at the same time, you could be doing a, a batch of laundry, running the freezer, the fridge, whatever loads you needed to run up to the capacity of that generator um, while you're charging at the same time. But the generator always, always has to be outside, right? Not even yes. in the garage, always, always outside. And that's one of the benefits I think of this is that I can take this inside and use some of my equipment and and run it, right? Yes. Okay, now the other thing, charging with solar. Okay. How do I do that? Um, in the same way, each one of these will come with some kind of a, um, well, first of all, solar, solar modules, solar panels, this is what you could use to charge that. And they come in a whole variety of sizes and shapes. The thing you want to make sure, um, and if you buy if you buy the solar panels from the company that makes the power station, then it's going to be all just set up to work perfectly. So in this case, this has MC4 connectors. Um, so what does bit, that mean to me? What's an MC4 connector? That is just this style of connector. That's kind of a standard for the larger solar panels, um, and they just connect together. Now, you're not going to connect this together because this is your positive and your negative. You're not going to plug this together, but you could plug others together with this, or you can use this with the adapter to plug into this. So and I could, like, hook four or five solar panels together. Is that what you're saying? Depending on, again, your power station, um, they all have different uh, capabilities as far as being able to recharge. And um, we, we have talked before about the three numbers that you need to understand. One of those is how much storage this has. Number two is how much energy can it put out. And number three is how much solar can you put in. They all have different capabilities as to how much solar you can input. And you would want, if you're gonna have one of these, to get the maximum solar so that you can put as much energy in when you have the solar energy to, to harvest. Okay, so one thing that I wanna point out when you are deciding which one you want is these are pretty heavy, right? I can do it. I yeah. can do it. Yeah. John can do it a lot better than I can. But they do have carts that you can put these on so that you can make them more mobile if you're somebody who's not as strong like I, I am or I'm not. Um, what is this? Okay. Um, this is kind of a new, unique feature to this energy unit. Um, they have teamed up with EMP Shield um, to provide EMP protection for not only the power station and not only your solar panels, but also anything connected to this, you would, um, you could still use these other plugs here, but you can use these, which are protected plugs. Anything plugged into these would be protected from an EMP um, overvoltage surge. Okay, the big question, what is an EMP overvoltage surge? Okay. Um, the short, the synoptic version. The very short version is uh, there are several ways that um, these surges can happen. One is through lightning. Um, that is one that probably is the most common. Uh, the other one is a natural EMP surge with a solar storm, a, a coronal mass ejection, several names for that but these create large amounts of energy streaming to the earth that can fry, especially modern day electronic circuits. Um, it can just fry them immediately. The third method is one that you've probably heard about just recently because uh, of what's going on in the world. Um, and that is a nuclear weapon detonated in the atmosphere can create this EMP surge, uh, which is just a huge surge of electricity that blows 
th stuff out. Um, and that's why this company is working with EMP Shield to provide protection so that the station and everything connected to it, upstream and downstream, gets protected. Okay, and an EMP actually stands for electromagnetic pulse. Yes. So if you want to do a little bit of research on that, you can find out more about that. But we definitely yeah. have a heightened threat right now. So, so this, is, this is really a good thing right, to be yeah. able to have that kind of protection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now one of the other questions that we are always asked is which is the best one? Which solar generator or power bank or power station should I buy? You really, again, have to decide how much energy do I need? Um, how much energy do I need to be able to pull out of this? Um, and how much solar do I want? So there's so many variables here, including, like you mentioned, the size of it, yeah. uh, the ability to move it around where you need it, um, and then, of course, your solar is, is a whole another situation to look at, um, deciding what you're going to do for solar. I just want to make sure, so you have tested all of these, and you would be confident recommending any of these? Yeah, I, I've had very good success with all of these. I, they seem to do a great job. Um, again, they have okay. different capabilities for how much you can run with them, uh, both as far as the size of the appliance and also how much, how long you could run that and, and how much solar, but okay. yeah. But these brands are brands that you're comfortable with? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so there are some brands out there that might not be as reputable. Right? And so be careful. These aren't the only good brands. We're not at all saying that. No, there's, but there's a lot of good brands. There's some that aren't probably as well known or maybe not quite as good. So look at the ratings and see what the ratings say before you buy. But for the question of the day, what are the critical loads that you need to run if the power goes out? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.